Thank you very much for the invitation. My name is Dirk Gürtel. I'm from Germany, from the Ribospine company. My background is biomedical engineering. I'm involved in the research and development of endoscopic spinal techniques since more than 20 years. And my topic today is technical aspects of full endoscopic spinal surgery. The development towards full endoscopic techniques was going along with the requirements for least invasive techniques and uh, the change from tubular systems to uh, working sleeve systems, which means that we use an endoscope with an integrated working channel. Finally, we, we are talking about the extended surgery systems, which has many components. We have, of course, the endoscopes as a main part. And uh, also here is important that we have a very good optical lens systems inside because we need light, especially when we want to, um, when we want to transmit uh, pictures with 4K, with a high resolution. Uh, the light transmission system is very important for that. Um, we need instruments and of course we have special requirements for the stability of the instruments and uh, in our systems we, we can work with instruments up to four millimeter diameter and of course uh, with different shapes for different tasks. We have drilling systems. Um, also here we have requirements. It's very useful when we want to use it under direct endoscopic view is to use the deflectable burrs. We have RF systems, um, uh, which are important. And we are working under continuous irrigation during the surgery. Therefore, the fluid management is very important for our surgery. What are the system requirements when we think on new developments? It's clear, uh, safety is. Number one, usability is very important. That means easy to use. Then the visualization is important, but also topics like economy should be efficient and also universal use. I want to highlight some topics for technical aspects regarding safety. And we very often it is discussed the topic irrigation um, what are the requirements for that? Um, on the one hand, we need a high flow to get a clear endoscopic picture, especially important for drilling. On the other hand, we have to avoid an increased intraspinal pressure due to the water irrigation. The tools for irrigation are usually the gravity. That means we hang up the back over the patient. And on the other hand, we can use a sufficient pump. One main question for using um, irrigation in endoscopic spinal procedure is how to avoid overpressure. One answer is we have to use an open endoscopic working sleeve system. What does it mean? I would like to explain this on the example gravity. We have the patient here. We have the intraoperative um, working area. We use a transferminal endoscope. We connect the back and the, uh, the irrigation tube. And um, if we would close now the system completely, that means we would not have any outflow. We could reach that pressure, which depend on the difference between the working area and the height of the back. And which can be like this. If we hang it up 50 centimeter above the patient, we can reach 36 mercury. If we hang it up 100 centimeter above the patient, we can reach a critical pressure of 73 mercury already. The question is how to avoid that. We just have to open the outflow. Um, and uh, when, but because when we open the outflow, only this pressure is getting effective. That means the difference of the water column between the intraoperative working area and the outflow of the endoscope, which is usually 15 centimeter and which means 12 mercury. As we now know that we have to use a system with a sufficient outflow, 
and the open outflow. The question is how to keep the outflow open during the surgery. Because we have to use instruments. We have different constructions of systems in the market. We have systems with two irrigation and outflow um, uh, channels inside the endoscopes and the diameter of the outflow uh, channel is the same as the inflow channel. The problem is here when we use a big instrument, we block the outflow of the working channel and then the outflow depends only on this area. And if we have this area equivalent to the inflow area and we know during the surgery can happen that some pieces of tissue can block the outflow, then there is a risk that we can increase the pressure inside the spinal canal or inside the area. Another system what we are using is we using an oval shaped endoscope and a round shaped sleeve and there's always a space between this oval shaped endoscope and the round sleeve and this area here we use for outflow. This area is five times bigger than the inflow area which is here uh, that means and in this way we can really avoid that we block the outflow that means the uh, outflow keeps open as long as you don't close this uh, attachment here a second possibility to avoid overpressure inside the patient is we have to use a flow controlled endoscopic pump system. What does it mean? For everyone who knows or who is familiar in using arthroscopic pump knows that you can only increase the flow by increasing the pressure. And this is what we have to avoid. So we uh, developed a, a special software for our existing arthro pump and we call this spine mode. And uh, yeah, the, yeah, the way how we do this uh, it's not a pressure control pump, it's a, it's a flow control pump. What we control is the flow, because we know when we don't have an outflow, we will not have flow, an inflow. And as long we have a flow, that means the outflow is open. And the system realizes then a pressure which will never be higher than 50 mercury due to this intelligent pump controlling system. Once the outflow is blocked, we don't have inflow anymore and then the pump will stop immediately the irrigation. So we can avoid that. Another important topic regarding safety is connected with the use of radiofrequency surgery. We have uh, special requirements here, especially we want to reach a safe and efficient hemostasis when we were close to neurostructures. On the other hand, also we want to resect soft tissue and this should be very efficient when we using RF surgery. But are there differences between different generators using or calling RF generators? Yes, there are. Radio frequency means a bandwidth between 350 kilo hertz on the lower end and 4 megahertz at the higher end. And we see that the electrical resistance of human tissue is going down towards higher frequency, which means less heating up of tissue when we use a higher frequency. And that means less heating transmission to surrounding tissue. And that's the reason, uh, especially when we work, we want to work close to newer structures, we want to avoid that much heat is going to surrounding tissue. That's the reason why we use a four megahertz device for endoscopic spinal surgery. Here we see the difference between both kind of devices, four megahertz with a blue line and 350 kilohertz with the red line. We did measurements at the tip, we could reach the same temperature. That means we have the same effect inside the tissue. But we, when we come uh, away from this tip inside the tissue, we measured different temperatures. With 350 kilohertz, we measured 58 um, Celsius degree with a 
blue line here with the four megahertz device, we measure 38 Celsius degree, which is a huge difference. And uh, especially when you work close to neural structure in this distance, you could um, destroy the neural structure with a 350 kilohertz device, but not with a four megahertz device. Also, the ergonomic handling for our electrodes should be sufficient, um, easy to use, the rotation should be possible, um, and the weight should be not too high, because um, there's always a risk that, especially for interlaminar approach, that the electrode drops down and then it should not damage any neural structures. Another milestone in the development of full endoscopic techniques was the development of new camera systems with a higher resolution. Nowadays, we are talking about 4K resolution. This allows us to zoom up the picture and we see the structures much more clearly with the higher resolutions and we can better differentiate structures. On the other hand, we have a possibility now to process pictures digitally. That means we can enhance it with higher contrasts or with different colors. And so we can have a better differentiation with this kind of image processing than before. Thank you very much for your attention. Mm -hmm.